gun battles rage on the street outside one of Haiti's biggest hospitals. Kenyan police here to help local forces take back the capital from the gangs. The first 400 officers from Nairobi quickly learning how volatile Port-au-Prince can be. Minutes earlier, CNN was touring what is left of the hospital after gangs trashed it. The country's interim prime minister telling us it was just reclaimed. There is no tactical or strategic value for the gangs taking over this. This is really just about, you know, completely discrediting the state. Is enough funding coming through for the multinational security support mission here? Unfortunately, not enough and not quickly enough. Now, we understand there are a lot of emergencies going on out there. And we understand there is, to a certain extent, some Haiti fatigue. The good news is that there is hope. Midway through the interview, shots ring out. Right. But this was really... The security detail springs into action. We've been told we have to leave now. We've had shots in the air. The gangs are getting closer. The Prime Minister and our team are rushed away. Go, go, go. I got your microphone. Uh, need to tell you, Bill, you... The constant menace of gang violence dominating life here, even for the country's leader. As night falls, we head out on patrol with Kenya's elite police forces who have been brought in to help turn things around. They're using four of these American-supplied MRAPs, or tactical vehicles, and we're going to patrol from the airport, which used to be under gang control until very recently, into the downtown area, which is still contested. CNN was granted exclusive access to film the Kenyans leading an international security force that is expected to grow to 2,500 officers from 12 countries, funded mainly by the United States. Haitian police lead the way as a convoy scans surrounding buildings for any suspicious activity. Oh. We soon come under fire. Dozens of bullets hit the vehicles. The officers are very casual about it. They're calling it rain. I guess they're used to it. This, we're hearing a few more from this side of the truck. Some of these men in Haiti say they have fought Al-Qaeda-affiliated terrorists on the Kenya-Somalia border. Do you think you guys can bring peace here? Uh, I have a lot of confidence that we are going to win this battle. More gunshots as we turn back, but the police decide not to engage. Back at headquarters, the damage from the night becomes clear. With 85% of Port-au-Prince under gang control, Civilians here are paying a heavy price. This okay. is one of the few operational hospitals in the capital, located in the city's red zone and surrounded by gang territory. 22-year-old Neftali Mahdi has brought her malnourished baby in for treatment. She was raped by a gang member, she tells me, and has had to flee her home because of the violence. The hospital lost half of its staff last year. Those remaining are determined not to give up. I have to fight back. You can't leave it for the gang I can't members. Leave it for the gang. Someone has to fight back. Someone has to stand up. With an estimated 2 million Haitians living in fear of being raped or killed in their homes, fighting back against the gangs is now an international effort. Haitian forces and their allies need resources, but leaders here tell us funding and equipment are not arriving fast enough. It's a matter of support. If they can be given the equipment that they need, these are the brave and courageous people. Through it all, this weary nation still has high hopes for peace. Larry Medowo, CNN, Port-au-Prince, Haiti.